DUI and DWI laws, penalties, and consequences, impaired driving. Part 1. It has been demonstrated that drinking alcohol has both physical and mental impacts that make it more likely that someone may be engaged in a fatal collision if they choose to drive while intoxicated. National collision data show that alcohol impairment may be a factor in about one-third of all fatal road accidents, reflecting this elevated risk. Every state has severe regulations against driving while drunk in an effort to reduce the number of alcohol-related fatalities on our roads. To discourage drunk drivers from using a vehicle, laws against drinking and driving carry harsh penalties. There is still a long way to go in the fight against drunk driving and the enforcement of alcohol regulations. Anti-drinking regulations, according to recent studies, only make up a minor portion of the solution. Enhancing public awareness of alcohol use and limiting alcohol use across the country are essential to reducing the epidemic of drunk driving. It would appear that the threat of harsh punishment is not always sufficient to deter drunk drivers. Additionally, it has been challenging to catch and convict drunk drivers up until recently. How exactly do we define intoxication to begin with? Although they are quite similar, each state has its own legal definition of intoxication. California If your mental and or physical faculties are impaired to such a degree that you no longer have the ability to drive with the prudence characteristic of a sober person, you are considered to be inebriated in California. According to Texas law, intoxication is defined as not having the normal use of one's mental or physical faculties due to the ingestion of alcohol, a prohibited substance, a drug, a dangerous drug, a combination of two or more of those substances, or any other substances. Before the invention of blood alcohol tests and the imposition of the legal blood alcohol limit, many drunk drivers were exempt from punishment if they did not exhibit overt signs of being intoxicated, as that term is defined in statutory definitions. Now, whether the subject appears to be impaired or not, a blood alcohol content BAC, of 0.08% or greater legally qualifies as inebriated. Per se alcohol-related traffic law Every state has enacted legislation stating that if a person's blood alcohol level is 0.08% or more, they are automatically considered to be intoxicated regardless of their actions or conduct. The term per se legislation refers to this since it means intrinsically or in and of itself. Simply put, a BAC of 0.08% is the only requirement for a conviction of driving while intoxicated, additional proof of drunkenness is not needed. Most people are unaware that even if their blood alcohol content BAC, is below this limit, they can still be found guilty of driving while drunk. The regulations against drinking and driving in place today are made to make it impossible for offenders to flee the law. If either of the following conditions holds true, you may be charged with drunk driving. Your BAC is at least 0.08%. According to state law, you are exhibiting symptoms of intoxication from drugs or alcohol. BAC Analysis the police officer who initially stopped you will be present at your trial to testify about your condition if you are charged with drunk driving. They will discuss what led to their initial decision to stop you, how you behaved along the road, and the results of any field sobriety tests they use to assess your level of intoxication. When a police officer suspects you of operating a vehicle while drunk, he or she will either conduct a breath test at the scene or a blood or urine test back at the police station to determine your blood alcohol content. The officer's evidence on your physical and mental impairment will not be necessary to convict you if the results indicate that your BAC is 0.08% or above. But the judge will consider that when determining how severely to sentence you for the offense. Punishments for driving while inebriated According to statutory law, each offense has a variety of potential punishments that the deciding court may choose from based on the specifics of the case. The following elements will be taken into account when deciding on a sentence for driving while intoxicated. Whether there were any injuries or fatalities. Whether any harm to the environment was done. If the suspect gave into arrest attempts or resisted. How high the offender's blood alcohol content was, or how they were physically and or mentally. Whether the offender has a criminal history for DUI or other offenses of a similar nature. Overall, be aware that driving while intoxicated will likely result in a hefty fine, 
potential jail time, and instant license suspension. You may receive a term of up to 10 years in jail if you are found guilty of intoxication assault, injuring another person while driving under the influence. You may receive a punishment of up to 20 years for intoxication manslaughter if you cause someone's death. Suspension of driver's license for DUI. It can take a very long time for you to be able to drive again if you are caught operating a vehicle while intoxicated. When a DWI conviction carries both license suspension and jail time, as it frequently does, the license suspension won't start until the offender has completed their jail sentence.